Okay. Where is that? Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to give you an overview of what happened during the Carnian. As Mike Benton said before, is the forgotten extinction of the hidden extinction. Yeah, so um, during the Carnian, there's this climate change called Carnian Plural episode, and um, it occurs at the uh, Julian Tuvalian boundary, so lower upper Carnian boundary, more or less. And this climate change is a climate change towards more generally more human conditions. This is how it was described in literature first. So, and the effects of this um, climate change are visible in many different geological settings all around the world, and is pretty much huge input of silicic lasting material into the basins, a development of paleosols typical of tropical humid climate, um, anoxic conditions with the position of laminated shales in some restricted basin, especially in the northwestern Tethys realm, a change in the carbonate factory from microbial carbonate factory to metazoan carbonate factory. And also we have some palynological evidence of climate change because we have uh, high graffiti palynological assemblages. Um, at the onset of the current probable episodes, a negative carbon acid of excursion was find at the Julian 1, so-called Julian 1, Julian 2 boundary. And this carbon as the prescription is recorded by bulk matter and also uh, biomarkers. These are long chain analkanes, but also short chain analkanes and isoprenal lipids that come from marine algae record the same uh, signal. So Data show that there is a negative carbon acid of excretion at the onset of the Carnian plural episode, and this suggests injection of light carbon into the atmosphere ocean system. So, this negative carbon acid of excretion then it was found in many different settings in uh, uh, Austria and Northern Cancarous Alps, in Hungary, in the Transnanubian range, and also more recently in China. And actually, in China, uh, Sun and colleagues. Um, showed that maybe more than one negative carbon isotope excursion punctuated the Carnian plural episode. Actually, very new data from Miller and colleagues from southwest England in Devon, this is core material, showed the same. They measured bulk organic carbon and also analkane um, carbon isotope uh, um, signature of these analkanes that come from <laughs> higher plants, and these show multiple negative carbon acid prescriptions as well during what it seems uh, to be the Carnian plural episode. Actually, these data are not very well biostratigraphically constrained. These are continental settings. So uh, we have pollen, and pollen give a general Carnian, Julian, late, late Julian uh, age for this section. So um, we cannot use this record to provide a reference curve, and we cannot correlate this with existing other records. So in order, in order to do this, we analyzed um, carbon isotopes of bulk organic matter of, from many different geological settings in the Dolomites, in, in southern Alps, Italy, in the Julian Alps, northeast part of Italy at the border with Slovenia, and in the core material from the Transnubian range in Hungary. This figure, I, I know that it's not very readable from the public probably, but the point of this figure is that there's a lot of biostratigraphic data, amnoids, conodonts, and palinomorphs. So these successions are very well biostratigraphically constrained, and we can actually build a reference carbon isotope curve for the Carnian pluvial episode. So these are data, bulk organic matter data, and when we have it, also wood uh, carbon isotope data. And data show, yes, there are multiple carbon isotope shifts, and we can give an age to these shifts. Uh, so I'll show you this. This is a, a composite record, a schematic composite record, and we have a first shift already recognized at the Julian Tuvalian boundary. The pink reddish color here is the Carnian Pluvial episode. At the onset, first negative carbon acid prescription. Another car negative carbon acid prescription within the Julian II. A third carbon acid prescription in the Julian Tuvalian boundary, and maybe a fourth carbon acid prescription in the Tuvalian one Tuvalian two boundary. I say maybe because this has been recorded only in one of our section that extended actually into the Tuvalian two, so it needs to be confirmed. So there are multiple carbon acid prescriptions during the Carnian Pluvial episodes. And we can try a correlation with the record of, from <coughs> China of Sune and colleagues. Uh, this record is supported also by conodont biostratigraphy, especially for the Julian. Then conodont biostratigraphy becomes not very well solid because conodonts get extinct. There's a major extinction among conodonts. 
And then we can try also a chemist, purely chemostratigraphic correlation with the records from Devon and uh, correlating pretty much the negative carbon isotope shifts. So we have a scenario for the carnium provide episode, which is similar to other uh, similar events like the n triastic with multiple carbon isotope discussion that punctuate an interval of major environmental change. This is, these are records from different environmental settings, uh, shallow water to deep water. And you can see that the previous early carnian carbonate sedimentation, microbial carbonate sedimentation with the Cassian type carbonate factories is interrupted. We have a change in the carbonate factory from microbial to metazoan carbonate factory and the arrival of a lot of silicic plastic, which is the orange color. Actually, in the Southern Alps, we can see that these siliciclastic inputs are closely correlated to the negative carbon isotope exclusion. So the negative carbon isotope exclusion slightly precedes the arrival of siliciclastic input into the basin. And during this interval, there's also an increase in the temperature as recorded by delta O18 of conodont apatite. So we have a classic, it seems that we have a classic scenario of Injection, injection of CO2 into the, into the system in pulses, increase in temperature, and announcement of uh, the hydrological cycle with announcement of continental weathering, and so input of siliciclastic from continents into the basin. There is also extinction during the Canyon Pluval episode, not very well studied yet, I have to say, that are um, sparse in literature and uh, old, pretty, most of them. Uh, but it's known that at the Julian Tuvalian boundary, there's a major turnover in the ammonites, one of the most important turnover in the entire Triassic, which is dis with the disappearance of the Trachyceratine ammonites. There's also a major extinction among conodons, only a few species survive the Julian Tuvalian boundary. And there's extinction among, among crinodes, for example. And uh, as Alex, uh, that is here now, showed recently, there is an extinction of the suspension feeders in general, so due to probably the arrival of the this uh, siliciclastic material into the basins. There's also turnover in terrestrial flora. Uh, it has been shown that during the late Carnian, there's a, loss of, a lot of species of pollen and spores. And also there is uh, extinction among, among vertebrate uh, fauna on continents. But what is very interesting about the Carnian Pluval episode is that the, this climate change seems to be linked to major evolutionary innovations. So, for example, the first major di diversification of dinosaurs happens during the, the Carnian Pluval episode, as well as the appearance of the first uh, calcareous nanoplankton plankton. Below the Carnian Pluval episode, that's the carbonates don't contain, almost don't contain calcareous nanoplankton. plankton. But then during the Carnian Pluval episode, you find calcareous nanoplankton of probable dinoflagellate origin that compose up to 10, 20% of the rocks, so rock forming uh, guys. Also, you have the appearance of the first, the first mammals, for example, are dated to the Tuvalian, and the first modern conifers are, are also of that age. <coughs> However, the, all these things need to be studied more and, and better constrained. So what, what's, what's the trigger of all this? What caused all, all of this? Well, as for other similar events, PT, TJ, et cetera, et cetera, also during the Canyon, there is a large genius province active and it's called the Vrangelia Large Ignis Province, in some literature also known as Nikolai Large Ignis Province. Uh, the basalts of Vrangelia Leap are now outcropping in the North Western American continent from Vancouver Island to Alaska. Uh, so this is, uh, we have um, subaqueous activity with pillow lava, we have then subaerial activity with basaltic floods. This actually is in Alaska, thick pile of basaltic floods. And it has been calculated that at least one uh, million cubic kilometers of basalts have been erupted. I say that because this is a minimum quantification. The Vrangelia terrains have been accreted during the uh, Jurassic and Cretaceous. So most of the material could have been subducted. Um, we can give an age of, uh, to the Vrangelia large Ignis province, which is very good, actually. Because on top of the last basalt, this is in Vancouver Island, this is a log from Vancouver Island, on top of Rangelia basalts, and within the last basaltic flats, we have limestones that contain ammonoids, and these ammonoids are late Tuvalian in age, early late Tuvalian in age. 
And the basalts in Vancouver Island lie on top of the Daunella beds. And the name says that these beds contain Daunella bivalves that are bivalves from, uh, from the uh, Ladinian bivalves. So it seems biostratigraphic age, Ladinian, later scan, early late scan. We have other evidence. Uh, we have some uranium lead uh, isotope data, not very good, I have to say, large, large errors, but these ages agree with the biostratigraphic age of the Vrangelia Larginius province, and it's Carnian. And also we have recent osmium, osmium isotope data that show that probably the onset of the Vrangelia Larginius province was in the latest Ladinian, almost at the boundary with the Carnian, Ladinian Carnian boundary. So again, for the Carnian, we have a scenario, which is again, I said again, it's similar to other events, which with a large genus province active, multiple negative carbon isotope excursions, huge environmental change globally, and rising temperature, which is accompanied also to extinction. Um, so to conclude, we identified three, maybe four, major negative carbon isotope excursions during the Carnian. We suggest that this event, as other events, was triggered by intensification of hydrological cycle due to injection of volcanic CO2 into the system. Like for other leaps, this injection was probably in different pulses. But what I really would like to highlight is that many questions are still open. What do we know about the Carnian? It's very basic. I showed you basic carbon isotope data. So many questions still open, and the Carnian deserves to be uh, studied more, I think. So I would like to thank, to conclude, all my collaborators and funding bodies. And I would like to also to thank all the people that took part to two workshops that we had last year and this year in Germany at the Hans Wissenschaft of a colleague, and we had fantastic discussions that also contributed to this uh, talk. So, thank you very much. Thanks, Jacopo. Any questions? Yes. Uh, anybody have measured some mercury in no, uh, your not sections? Yet. No, not yet. Okay. Uh, how about the, the significance of the marine extinctions? Uh, you mentioned about the change in the primary productivity uh, and then the loss of the ammonoids and some of the conodonts. Do you yeah. think that's a major driver of extinction, the, this change from what you said uh, microbial to metazoan? Yeah. So what's the question? What's the driver or the severity? Was, was that well, sorry, yeah. Was, it, was that switch a ma main cause of the marine extinction, do you think? Uh, I don't know, actually, the answer to this question, but there is a major change, actually. I've, I would like to point out also that uh, what's interesting about the carnage is that the switch, for example, in the carbonate factory, is from microbial to metazoan, so which is the other way around, as David uh, showed us before. Uh, for example, in the PT, you see the, the other thing. So that's interesting. And uh, so you have a lowering of the supersaturation, probably. Uh, but who knows? Wait for the microphone one minute. There you go. Uh, Jacobo, almost your last slide, the one showing the Rangelia dates, there seem to be three different, yes, yeah. the, the black spots. They seem to be widely spread through the middle upper Carnian into the Norian. Yeah. So what, do you, what, what actually are you ending up with that lot as a date? Uh, I think uh, these are multiple zircon and badelite uh, zircon fractions. And I'm not an expert of, of uh, radioisotopic aging, but I spoke with experts and they told me that it's not very good, uh, the aging. Uh, I have to say that Vrangelia experienced during the accretion a lot of um, mess. So most of the ages are actually argon-argon ages. There's a lot of argon-argon ages, but all reset to younger ages. So probably there is also this effect, diagenetic effect. 